This is the 2016 Mercedes AMG GTS. It's the spiritual successor to the automaker's SLR and SLS supercars, only now it's sort of evolved into a super sports grand tourer meant to compete with the likes of the 911 and the Audi R8. Now viewed in profile, it looks to me like the Porsche 911 is the most direct competitor of those two models. The GTS and it share very similar proportions and a very similar roof line. And if you walk around back, it even kind of looks like Mercedes has wholesale ripped off the 911's rear taillight cluster. However, Mercedes has chosen not to hang the engine over the rear end like the Porsche or over the rear axle like the Audi. Instead, it's gone with a front amidships configuration for its V8. That means the engine sits ahead of the driver, but behind the front axle. That's how we end up with this extremely long and exaggerated front hood. And one of the biggest differences between the GTS and its predecessors is the doors. The GTS's doors open and close like this. Not like this, not like this, but like this. These are not billionaire doors, people. Humorous pop culture references aside, Super Sports Grand Tours like the AMG GT are as much about drama as they are about outright performance. So the lack of dramatic doors, the step down to regular doors is well a bit disappointing for this generation. Fortunately, there's plenty of drama to be had coming out of the tailpipe, especially in this race mode, which is gonna put the active exhaust in its loudest, most aggressive setting. We've also got Sport Plus, Sport, and comfort settings that are gonna allow you to dial down the performance and aggression from fast and furious down to daily driver. Now acceleration from the V8 engine is locomotive-like. That is to say that it is smooth, it is strong, and well, it's loud. And the handling of this Grand Tour, even in its most comfortable mode, is going to be pretty firm. The car stays really flat in the turn, then gives you really good seat of the pants feedback coming up through the chassis and into these sport bucket seats. The steering, on the other hand, is a bit overboosted and doesn't offer as good fingertip feel as I would like, but that does kind of help the car feel a little less twitchy and a little more planted. What I do like is that the steering is very direct and weights up nicely when you chuck it into a turn and you can really sort of feel the vehicle working around you. So the seat of the pants feel sort of makes up for the lack of fingertip feel in this vehicle. The first nitpick is gonna be with that very long hood we've got out front, which can make maneuvering in very tight quarters a bit tricky. You've kind of got to get used to having the equivalent of the length of a Smart for two between the steering wheel and the Mercedes logo on the hood. The other problem is going to be with the rear quarter visibility. The blind spots on this vehicle are a little bit bigger than I'd like, but to its credit, there's not a whole lot of vehicle back there to keep track of. Ergonomics are good. They're not Porsche good, but this is a very comfortable car. All the controls are where you'd like them, with one exception. That's going to be the shifter, which is located way back here and probably the worst bit of real estate on the center console. With an automatic transmission and paddle shifters, you're not gonna be touching it a whole lot when you drive around, so even that is a little bit forgivable. Now, I know no one came here to talk about fuel efficiency, so I'll just say that during about 250 miles of testing, I've averaged about 18 miles per gallon, which is pretty good for a vehicle this powerful when you consider the way that I've been driving. Regardless of which setting you find yourself in, the GTS does a really good job of making the driver feel awesome and making the drive feel special but it doesn't really feel like a race car, even when you put it in the race mode. When you really start tossing this car around, it starts to feel a bit like an apex road car, which is a good thing. It's very comfortable, the drive is very relaxed, and you can go ridiculously fast in this car. But I don't know if I'd wanna go ridiculously fast on a racetrack. The 2016 Mercedes AMG GT is a car that will turn heads everywhere you go, both with its well, gorgeous looks and with its extremely loud exhaust note. But the thing that I like most about this car is the way that it makes you feel. If you give the GTS enough road, it will make you feel like a race car driver on the street, even if it doesn't necessarily back it up with race car performance. It is a super sports car in the truest sense of the word. Later this year, Mercedes will also launch a GT with no S that's a little bit more toned down with a little less power and a GT3 version for those looking for something race ready. 
pricing for those hasn't been announced, but we expect that they'll bracket this Brutinus suit nicely.